Pterodactyl here. And today we're gonna do a review on this here 30 inch Toro Time Master. Now Toro gave me this mower to do a review on. Now I don't know if some of y'all remember, but we do have some how-to videos already on this mower. But this is the latest, newest version of it. So this mower has a lot of features that their personal pace 22 inch walk behind mower has. You can side discharge with it, and they give you a side discharge chute. You can mulch with it, or you can bag with it. So it'll do three things. So here's the side discharge chute that just fits in there like that. So now you can shoot the grass out the side. And there are other mowers do that too. That other mower we did a review on also had these same features. So a lot of Toro products have these features. It also has that stow and go feature, which is this lever here. So you can stow, stow the mower in your garage to take up less space. So you can put it in your garage like that and it'll take up less space in your in your garage if you need it. Now this is a twin blade mower. It doesn't have one big 30 inch blade. It has two blades. And if you notice, they're timed. And they overlap. So as the blades wear, you'll never get that strip of grass that it would leave. And these are called their patented atomic blades. So you might want to wear a hazmat suit because these might be radioactive. No, no, they're not. But that's what they're called, atomic blades. And that's this mulch system here. This helps to grind up the, the grass finer. Which is the same type of blade they have on their other mowers. So this is their patented design. And it's got some heavy duty deck spindles on there. So they call this a WAM mower. W-A-M. Not like the band with George Michael WAM. WAM stands for Wide Area Mower. That's why it's a 30 inch. So this, this mower is like for the, the person who has, say, a lawn that is too big for like a 21 inch mower, it may take them a long time to cut the grass, or a 21 or 22 inch mower, but their lawn isn't big enough that they need a riding mower, so they need something in between. And I also know that these mowers are real popular with lawn maintenance guys. They buy a lot of these. So there's a single lever for the front and rear to adjust the wheel, so you don't have to you know, go around and adjust all four. You can adjust your cutting height in the back with the one lever and then in the front with the one lever. It also has a washout port. And for those of you that don't know how that works, when you get done cutting the grass, you want to take the mower and put it all the way on its lowest position then you hook the garden hose to that, you start the mower, you engage the blades, and it'll wash out underneath the deck. And you want to do that in an area, it makes a mess, so you're going to want to do it in an area where, you know, you can clean it up easily. Usually on a concrete or asphalt area, you don't want to do it on your grass because you got it on the lowest position and you're just going to have a, a big low spot in your lawn. But that's how, that's how those work the best, when you put it all the way down on the very lowest position. And then there's letters on there, so you know what position to put the mower in. One of the drawbacks of using this washout plug from a mechanics aspect, since we work on this stuff a lot, is that would have a tendency to wash 
the oil out of these bottom bearings, the grease out of them. Because we had some customers that would use that to keep it clean under there and uh, eventually the, the grease would be out of the bottom bearings and they would have to be replaced. And it was always on the bottom, never on the top. And we found out it was from using that wash plug. So since there's no grease fittings on these spindles, that could be a potential problem. Because if you had grease fittings, you could grease it and then push the water out. But you would have to be diligent on doing that. So let's talk about the engine that's on here. It's got a Briggs and Scranton engine. And that's not 10 horsepower, that's 10 foot-pounds of torque. It's 223 cc's. So that's roughly seven, seven and a half horsepower, somewhere in that range. It's not 10 horsepower. It's got that auto choke system, so there's no primer or nothing on it. There is a fuel filter, because they use the same engine on some other lawnmowers that, you know, Briggs makes this for other manufacturers. And it's got this blue foam in the gas tank. Now from what they tell me, that blue foam is supposed to help from overfilling it. So when you fill it up, I guess you're supposed to be able to see it easier when you get to the top. I thought it was to keep the fuel from sloshing around. But from a mechanic standpoint, I've seen this blue stuff and yellow over the years in Briggs engines. And I've seen where it starts to break down and we end up pulling it out of there. And I would think that that takes up some of the volume of the gas tank. So I'm thinking if you pull that thing out, you could probably get more gas in there. I don't know. That's what I think. Now it does have a blade brake type clutch system on it. So when you start the engine, all you got to do is pull the rope. And then once it starts, you pull up on this blue lever and you engage the blades and now you can start mowing. And it's got that personal pace drive on it. So the harder you push on this, the faster it goes. But it also has this blue assist handle on it, which is kind of nice. And this is kind of nice on hills, if you're on a hill. You can kind of put your fingers on here and you can adjust, you know, by pulling. So it's giving you some leverage. It's got a momentary kill switch, which means when you push it on stop, you gotta hold it down until it completely stops. And then it springs back to the on position. I think on the some of the older um, Toro mowers, not, not necessarily this one, I think the switch, you had to click it on and click it off. So if you forgot, you know, you could be pulling and pulling and pulling. And, oh yeah, I forgot I gotta turn the switch on. Now they also make this mower with electric start. We don't have the electric start model, but they do make it an electric start. And they make a commercial grade one, which has a lot more heavier features on it. They have a Kawasaki engine instead of the Briggs and Scranton, and it's got some other heavier stuff, different wheels, different wheel adjusters. It's all beefed up a lot more. But of course, when you do that, the price also goes up. But there are a lot of commercial grass guys that will buy this because it's cheaper and use it commercially. So, let's, uh, Fire it up, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. And then go cut some grass. So I got the wheel adjuster set on D for dactyl. Now we're gonna start it. And I got it set up for mulching.
maybe you do know, but you're not supposed to bolt graft that deep. So you heard it really pulling itself down. The way mulching works is you shouldn't be cutting off more than one inch of the grass at a time in order for it to work properly. So what I just did there wasn't right, but I just wanted to show you, you know, on camera. So we're gonna put the side discharge in and we're gonna go through that other section of heavy grass and see how it does. So one thing I forgot to mention was it does have a mulch plug. So when you side discharge, you gotta have the mulch plug in and then there you go, there's the side discharge right there. So we're gonna fire it up, fire it up and then go cut and see how it works this time. We still got it set on D for dactyl. it didn't pull down. The reason it was bogging down is that grass had nowhere to go. There was too much grass we were trying to feed to it. It had nowhere to go and it was pulling the motor down. And you know people do that too. And then they come to your shop and then they're all, this thing big jump. No, you're just using it wrong. All right, so now let's put the bag on. Take this off. Take the mulch plug out. which it has a little lever you gotta push down to pull it out. trans wide open this thing goes pretty fast you practically have to jog after it I wasn't just doing that to be funny you really gotta get at this thing if you've got it wide open so if you're a fast walker this thing can cut grass fast whoa look at that bag boy we packed her full Like I mentioned before, we had done a few videos on these mowers. And one thing I noticed, they did upgrade. This used to be made out of plastic on the older models. I don't know exactly what year they changed it, but it's metal now. But that part used to be plastic, and we did a video on how to upgrade it to this metal one. So another thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that belt cover off and we're gonna look we're gonna look under that cover. So there's four, one, two, three, four, three, eight bolts to pull this cover off. 
And I want to see if they made any improvements up under here. And it looks like they haven't. Because we did a video on these pulleys. On the commercial mower, they have an upgraded steel, all steel pulley for this. And then here's your times belt, which is what times the blade so they don't crash into each other. So this was a problem we've seen on the ones that came in our shop. These pulleys would fail. So we have a video to upgrade that. Hey, what are you doing? I'm doing a review on a mower, why? Oh, you're doing a review on the Sturdy Instoro? Yes, why? Oh cool, well, I was just wondering, I was just hanging out. Why do you have one? Uh, I used to. I know a little bit about them. Oh yeah, what problems did you have? Uh, this blue belt, that seems like you gotta replace it quite often. I wouldn't say like every day or anything, but that was one problem I always had with it, that blue belt. So you're saying the blade belt wasn't of good quality or? Well, I don't know. It seems like they just got that one little belt power in both of those blades. So you think it should be a heavier belt? Maybe something heavier, yeah. Okay. So what other things have you experienced with owning one of these? Because you had an older version? Yeah, I had it when it first came out. It was a little underpowered. That engine was a lot smaller, so kept blowing head gaskets, I know that, but with this bigger engine, they haven't really had that issue, I know that. And I know the gas tanks were an issue, didn't you say something about that? Yeah, we had a few of them come in with gas tank uh, issues, leaking uh, from the cap. It didn't seem to seal very well, so we had that. I know uh, the transmissions too on the early ones, they had problems with that, they had to replace them quite a bit, so. But the second version of the trans seems to be pretty good, hold up pretty well. Yeah, I did notice that uh, the ones that did come in, the early versions that we that we saw, the transmission seemed a little weak. This, this one seems real powerful. Yeah. So maybe if you have an earlier uh, version of this and you didn't like it, Maybe you liked the mower, but there were some things you didn't like about it. I'm sure that it's improved now. Because this thing seemed to have plenty of plenty of torque when I was pushing on this. I mean, it really wanted to go if it, if it had to. But yeah, yeah. we did see some issues. I remember changing a few transmissions. I think we even did a video on that too, where we changed the transmission. And I think we even talked about that the new trans was better. The average homeowner probably puts about 40 hours a year on their mower. If you're using this commercially, you're doing that in one year or one week figure. You're putting 40 hours of wear on a, on a mower in one week if you're using the mower commercially. Because if you're working eight hours a day, five days a week, you know, that's 40 hours. So every week you're putting a year that a homeowner would put on there. So does that make sense to you? So the average homeowner, 40, 50 hours, some even less. Some use their mowers less depending on how big their yard is. So you gotta keep that little formula in your head. That's how we figure out, you know, when things got our meters on them, that's how we figure out, well, how many years of wear does it have on it? because we figure 40, 50 hours a year is what the average homeowner puts on a piece of uh, lawn equipment and a commercial guy puts that amount of hours on there in usually about a week. So to sum it up, overall, this is a nice unit. This is a residential unit, you gotta remember that. This is made for the homeowner. This isn't a commercial unit. So for the residential homeowner, this is a nice mower. This will give you a lot of good years of service before you have any problems. I do have a few customers that have these, that use them residentially, not commercially, and they haven't had any issues other than just bringing it in for normal maintenance. Blades, air filter, oil change, no major problems. You know, the only major problem would be is if they hit something, which, you know, that's not Toro's fault. Well, they didn't they didn't hit that stump you did so it's a nice unit I like that stow and go feature which they have on a lot of their equipment you know so it takes up less space at your home so you got more room for other crap that you're gonna bring there 
and uh, seems like it got a good good drive on it. 30 inch cut. Maybe you got a 22 inch mower, and you're like, you know what? I wish I could. I wish I could cut some time off my grass cutting. Well, maybe you might want to look into getting one of these. You know, you're adding eight inches to your to your cutting swap, so you're going to get done a little quicker. So, if you're interested in this mower, go to your local Toro dealer, check out all Toro's products, or go to Toro's website and read up on it, look at it, and see, you know, maybe this is something that uh, you might be interested in. Anything you want to add, Slippers? Uh, I think they got it pretty well dialed in now. Uh, seems like they made the proper improvements to make it pretty solid. Pretty and in about well. how many years would you figure this they've had this now? Uh, it's been a, been a while. Right. So it's like anything, you know, when something first comes out of product, you know, the consumer is the one that really puts it through the test, you know. And, and us at shops, when we do warranties on it, you know, the warranties go in and they look at those warranties and go, okay, well, maybe we should improve on this or that because now we're doing warranties on this. You know, that's how they learn how to upgrade stuff is through the warranty process. So between the homeowner and the, and the shop, they've made some great improvements on this. I like this mower. I have no use for it at my house, but maybe you do. And I recommend that you, uh, if you're interested to check it out. So as always, there's your dinner. <laughs>